In today's video tutorial, I'm going to cover setting up master materials. Um, for those of you that haven't used master materials before, they're extremely powerful and extremely beneficial to any pipeline. Um, and today we're actually going to create the material that's on the left. Uh, that's all of the, the nodes, the hierarchy of everything that we'll set up. And contained within that, we have uh, a couple different things. We have some material functions that uh, have been, uh, they're basically just collapsed nodes to allow us to have just a little bit cleaner looking graph. Um, we have exposed parameters uh, that we can control. And then ultimately what we're going to do with it is create a material instance, which is what you see on the right, with all of those ex uh, exposed parameters that you can change, which makes it very, very easy and friendly to use. Uh, so we'll go through the process of just setting up a real simple material and then uh, the decision process behind when you decide to kind of break off and start creating a master material. Uh, and then, of course, what parameters you expose, what kind of controls you have. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, we'll recreate this complex node uh, as quickly as possible. So. Uh, this isn't a very long video um, and then again in the end you'll be able to have a material that you can use uh, and of course you could add or take away more controls depending on your environment and what you want to use so let's dive in okay so first things first let's go ahead and just open up a material that's already been created uh, this is just a very basic material uh, nothing fancy here, right? Uh, you've got a base color. We have a combined texture map. This has the ambient occlusion in red, the roughness in green, the metallic in uh, blue, and then we have a normal map. So, right, a very basic material, but we really can't do anything with it. Um, the values we get, so this color um, and the normal intensity information, all that is it's fixed. So let's go ahead and just start modifying this a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate him, call it basic one. And we'll open him up and then let's go ahead and apply him to the second sphere so we can see. And then uh, we'll dive in. So there, there's an assumption here that as we're creating this that you guys at least understand a little bit about material setups and, and how to be able to, to add different controls, different nodes uh, to change things. So for example, if I take my, uh, my base color and let's just say I do a multiply and then I pull this off and I do a constant one vector and let's say I multiply it by 0.25. Right, so it's supposed to make it darker. I'll plug this into my base color and I'll save it. And the second sphere should update. There we go. I'll move this guy since I'm gonna do that. So there you can see that we've we've added a change, right? Now this is the first step in that mentality of thinking about a master material, right? So I can go in here, I can right click, convert to a parameter and I'll call this uh, diffuse multiply. Okay, now I won't see anything with this particular material yet until I right click create material instance. There's a basic one instance, apply it to here. I'll go ahead and open this guy. And there we go. There's that diffuse multiply. Now, something to note if you if you don't really know this, what's powerful about these material instances, right? If I come in here and I change this value, let's say I bump it up to like 0.7, right? Um, yeah, but actually, normally when you do that, you have to click reapply, save it, you wait for it to compile, wait for it to push out, it updates in here, and there you go, you can see it, right? Like, it, it's not a very long process, but it's time consuming if you have to make lots and lots of changes. Versus this instance, if I come in here and I apply it, and I go to here, I can drag this in real time and see the changes. So super, super powerful, super um, much quicker for your artist or anybody that's needing to go and manipulate and change things. The second thing here is that, right, like with this material instance, I just see the parameters. I don't see all this node structure and stuff like that. So uh, there is a, de a degree of control that you give to your artist, whoever's manipulating this, but at the same time, you don't allow them to go in here and, and break apart the whole thing. So very, very quick kind of principle here. Um, with you know where we want to expose for parameters stuff like that and you'll see as we dive into the more complex one where that really comes into play the next thing that i want to talk about real quick is the idea of nesting material functions within your materials and what i mean by that is you know let's say for example that with this particular material i know that the textures are fully repeatable and i want to bump up how um, how much they they tile right so i could go into each one of these ah, there's really nothing there so like, okay, I'll right click and I'll do uh, text coordinate, right? And then I'll multiply this. 
because I want to take what is the standard value, we'll go ahead and do a constant two vector, right? Two vectors, X and Y for coordinates. And I'm going to go ahead and let, I'm just going to put these values of four and I'm going to plug it into my UVs here, UVs here and UVs here. Go ahead and click apply and we should see the sphere update real quick. And there we go. I'll kind of zoom around here so you can see. Um, so now we're tiling. Great. Okay. So this this process here, right? There's there's nothing complex to it, but I want to use it over and over and over again. That's where created material function comes in very handy. So I'm going to collapse all these down into what essentially is just a little single node um, to be able to use that over again. So uh, I'll go ahead and. Um, I've got the material functions in here, but uh, let's just, I'll, I'll right click. We'll, we'll, we won't use this one, we'll use the one already created. But I'm going to right click, create materials and textures, material function, and I'm going to call this UV tiling. Okay, I'm going to open this guy, and I will bring him over. And I'll show you this process here. So with this, I'm using the material function as a small snippet of code to, to process things. So um, I'm going to recreate what we have here. So I'll right click and I'll do a multiply. Right, so we've got this, and I know that I'm going to need my text coordinate, so I'm going to take text coordinate. That's my first one. Now, with this, I want to be able to have an input, so I'm going to do function input. And on this one, I know that I need a vector 2. Plug it into here, and then I will output this. Okay, now here, I'm going to change instead of in, I'm going to say UV tiling. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'll show you where the advantage here is. Okay, so I'm going to drag this material function in. Bam, there we go. So from here, we can see we get an output, right, which is this guy, output result. And then on the input, we have this UV tiling, which is this function input we created. And we named it UV tiling, and there it says UV tiling. I can come here and change this, and let's just say I just call it UVT, right? Go ahead and apply. And you'll see this change there, it is UVT. So effectively what I'm able to do here is I'm able to remove um, all of these and replace it with, I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy. So we've got our tiling, delete these two. And I think we can do convert to parameter. Dun, 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 dun. Actually, I'm gonna change this guy back because I know this does work. So I'm not gonna do my X and Y, I'm gonna change it to a single scalar. So you see V2 goes away, it's a scalar. Take him, delete, we'll do a constant. Right click, convert to parameter, and we'll name this UV tiling. And I will plug him in, and there we go. So here, I'll change him to four. Right, so, so all of this little code right here, again, it's not very much code. Um, but it's been replaced with just this single node, um, which is super powerful. If you want to try to collapse things and make your graph a lot prettier, make it a lot neater, uh, this is one way to do that. So I'll go ahead and close him, and I will drag what, because we've already got one set up, which is literally the same thing. We'll take him. I'll show you too. Here's another thing as well as kind of a, a clear example. Um, we've created something which is just a normal a normal strength and I won't dive too deep into this one um, it's kind of side of the scope but basically we just have an input from the normal map which is vector 3 so red green blue we mask out the red and green channel we multiply it by a value coming in called normal strength we then come back and we add the blue channel we append it and that's our output um, Again, I won't describe too much uh, but basically your red and green channel is going to control the intensity your blue channel not so much that's why we split it out and add it back in later. So with this material function, right, I can come here. I have my my normal. I can add normal strength, drop it, add my base normal, pull off here. Let's do a constant, just a one vector. I'll right click, convert to parameter, and I'll name this normal strength. There we go. And I'll plug this into my normal. And of course, this is set at zero, but let's just bump it up to one as a default. We'll apply. And now if I go back in, now I have those controls, right? So there was a UV tiling that we added. I can do that in real time. I've also got my normal strength, so I can really crank it up, crank it down, so on and so forth. So um, 
that's kind of the basic introduction to when you start getting to a process where you want to create a material master as opposed to making all of these one-offs, right? So we, we want to expose these parameters. We want to be able to see things. We want to have this kind of control as opposed to having to go in and, and manipulate all of these controls so the nodes um, and then also uh, being able to expand that out to have uh, much, much tighter control over what parameters can be changed. Uh, so you, main some uniform, you, you can maintain some uniformity in your pipeline. Uh, and then, of course, with the creating these kind of material functions are just, you know, things that you want to repeat and use over and over again that you don't want to have to keep recreating from scratch every single time. Just create these material functions, drag them in, drop them, uh, plug in whatever parameters you want, right click, convert to parameter, uh, expose those. So then you have those controls and, uh, and Bob's your uncle. So much, much easier. Okay, so for the second half of this tutorial, let's dive in and actually start creating this this master material, right? Like we we've already decided in our on our production pipeline that we want to be able to have all these controls exposed to our artists, to our level designers, to whoever is going to have these materials, uh, to be able to manipulate them, change certain parameters, uh, and then ultimately just create a bunch of instances from that. So. Uh, we'll dive into that process now. So I'm going to go ahead and right click. I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to call this M Master. Let's name that M Master. There we go. All right, we have them open. And there we go. So let's go ahead and begin. So the, the first process that I typically do with the masters is um, just dragging in the things that I know I'm going to need. So I'm going to do some placeholder text uh, textures. So I'm going to have my base color, my normal, and this kind of layered. I'm going to drag these guys in. I'm going to go back to my material functions, which we'd already set up, my UV tiling, my base normal strength. All right, there we go. So I'm going to take these guys, let me split them. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna right click on these guys. I'm gonna convert them to parameters. There we go. So this is, I'm gonna name base color. I'm gonna create a new group. I'm gonna call this texture inputs. Name this guy our arm, which is ambient occlusion, roughness, metal, texture inputs. This guy we're gonna name normal. And we're going to apply him to texture inputs. And then I know I've got my UV tiling, so I'm going to branch off of here. Let's do a constant, convert to parameter, and we'll call this UV tiling. And again, we'll put this with our texture since we know that's what we're controlling anyways. Plug them into our UVs. With my normal, I know I'm going to have my normal strength, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this. We'll do another constant. Right click, convert to parameter. We're going to name this normal strength. And I'm going to go ahead and put him in his own group called normals. So again, anything that's going to deal with our normal control, we'll put in there. Plug him in. Red will go to ambient occlusion. Green to roughness and blue to metallic. Let's go ahead and take this, create our base color and Oh, our tiling set to zero, so let's go ahead and do default value of one. All right, so that looks good. I will go ahead and save him. And then the next process is, of course, along this whole this whole uh, the, the process of creating your master material, you want to see what the change is going to affect. So I'm going to right click on this M master, create a material instance. I'll just keep that name and I'll open him up. And then let's go ahead. I'll drag him here, and we can start comparing. So there we go. So we have our normal strength. We have our texture inputs, which we can activate and change. And we have our UV tiling. Make sure that that's, yep, that's working. Change him to four just to see. Perfect. Okay. So we know things are starting to work. Go ahead and save him. All right. 
this this now is the process where I, I can't tell you that there's an exact formula to what you should do next in terms of what kind of controls do you want to expose for your artist, your level designers, or anything like that. That is entirely up to you. Um, uh, so I, I recommend in this process to spend a little bit of time thinking about, okay, what kind of control do I want to give uh, with this particular material master, right? Do I want to have like the end all be all, the one master to rule them all? Do I want to have a couple smaller master materials? So like one that's specifically designed for level architecture, one that's for like props, maybe one that's for emissive. Um, that's really just pre-planning on your end. Again, I, I can't tell you that there's an exact uh, science to say, oh yeah, this is when you should use it. But I do encourage you just kind of think through um, and, and do a little bit of pre-planning ahead of time. Um, now with this particular one, uh, we're just kind of throwing some generic controls in there for, um, in this case, what would be just kind of our, our fully tileable, repeatable textures that we want to have a little bit more control over um, to maintain a very light library of textures, right? So we don't have a ton of them, but we're able to change color. We're able to adjust if they're, they're more metallic, if they're not, roughness, uh, and then eventually add kind of a little dirt layer. So um, let's go ahead and start adding in some of those uh, more complex controls. So let's start with, we'll actually start with our, our base color first. So I'm going to drag these guys because we're going to need a lot more room for this. So I'm going to take my base color up. I'm going to go ahead and comment and we'll call this base color. There we go. And I'll drag him out. Okay, so the first parameter I want to do is I want to do a multiply, and I want to come out of here with a constant. Right-click, convert to parameter. I'm going to name this guy base color multiply. So this way I can make it darker, lighter, and we've already got our, our normals and our texture input. I'm going to create a new group called base color. Now that's where I'm going to put all these uh, these parameters. Okay, so I've got a multiply. And uh, next thing I want to do is uh, I, I want to tint this, right? So I, I, I may possibly want to change the color. So I'm going to drag off. I'm going to create a blend, uh, not blend screen, blend overlay. There we go. So that's going to be my base. Uh, I'm going to create a constant three vector. And I'm going to right click convert to parameter. And we're going to call this base tint. I'll plug him into blend. I'm going to go ahead and just do something just so I know that this is a, there we go, just an arbitrary color, red, purple, pinkish, doesn't matter. Okay, so now I'm blending, but I, I want to be able to control how much of this tint goes in. So to do that, I'm going to drag off here. I'm going to do a lerp, no, linear interpolate, there we go. And I'm going to, uh, if you don't understand what a linear interpolate is, basically it takes uh, two values. We've got our A and our B. So A is going to be our, our base color coming in. B is going to be whatever we tint. Um, and then the alpha is going to determine how much gets tinted, where it gets tinted, so on and so forth. So if it's white, it's going to add all of B to the white areas. If it's black, it's going to keep whatever's in A. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this. And for my alpha, instead, I'm going to use a constant. Right click, convert to parameter, and I'm going to say tint amount. Actually, let's name this uh, base color tint amount. There we go. Okay, so as I ramp this up, so say for example, if I do 0.5, right, I'll have. Da, da, da. Oh, I need a preview. We'll start previewing. Nope. Let's see, do we have our tiling? Yeah, we've got our tiling. Um, why aren't we? Oh, because our tint amount is gone. So I'm going to take this tint amount to 0.5. Let's preview. There it is, base color multiplied. That's why, because our default value is not set at 1. Okay, perfect. All right, so we know we're going to retain the, the base color. Okay, so tint amount. So say if I say 0.1, it's right, just a little bit of red. But let's say that I go all the way up to 1. I now have that full tint color there. Um, so that's what that's doing. Okay, and then the next step that I want to do is I want to do a hue shift. So this comes in handy, for example, if uh, let's say that our, our base, our, our base color map actually has some color information in it, right? Let's say it's like a hot pink. We don't want hot pink, we want blue. Instead of creating an entirely new texture map, let's just shift the hue. So I'll drag off here. I'll do another constant convert to parameter and I'm going to say hue shift 
here. And I'll just leave him at one for now. And then the last piece I want to do is a desaturation. Again, kind of along the same lines of if, uh, if for example, you know, there's color information in my base, I, I want to be able to have some control of that. So I'll do another constant, right click, convert to parameter, and we'll call this uh, desaturation amount. Okay, there we go. And then let's go ahead and connect this guy to our base color. And then the last bit is, um, I'll change him. Now, a little side note here, whatever you put in your default value is what's gonna show up in your material instance when it's unchecked. So for example, our UV tiling by default is set to one. So if I come back here, you'll see reset. So with it unchecked, it's going to use that default value. So if you want something else to show up across your mass materials without having to manually click, change it every single time. You know, Say for example, we know we always wanna use a UV tiling of four. Just go back into your master change your UV tiling, or in this case, because that's what we want to do, I'll save to four. And then when I save it, this will pop up instead of saying one, four will be my default, just like that. So, okay. Um, so the last thing before I save this and I go preview is I'm going to select everything that I converted to a parameter, and I'm going to go ahead and add those to my base color. So we'll save, jump back over to our instance, and let's check to see what we have. There we go. Cool. Okay. So base color multiply. We'll check that. Yep. That's working. Base color tint amount. Perfect. So I'm going to set that to one. I'll click my base tint. Now if I go here, oh, light show. Yeah. So it changes color. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. And then desaturation, because this is a post. Okay. So this is going to be a little. Okay. So I'll explain here. So zero not desaturated, one fully desaturated, right? So it goes back to what we had before. I'll check that, we'll check our hue shift and boom. Cool, okay, so there we go. So we know our material instance is working now. So perfect, okay. So that completes our base color. Um, let's go to, let's, uh, let's actually jump in and do our normals. Well, we have our normals here. Okay, so we got our normal strength. Yep, you know what? Let's just, we'll leave that now. Uh, we'll actually come back and we'll kind of modify this a little bit. I'll, sh I'll show you some uh, uh, a cool little trick that we can do with this to uh, to give us a little bit more control. So, okay, next thing, let's go ahead and add our. Specular controls. Um, again, knowing that we have this mass of material, right? Like in this particular instance, we have we have concrete, right? Like it's not very, it doesn't have very high specular values, but because this is a master material, we still want to be able to have controls to modify and adjust that. Um, so say, you know, for example, we want to reuse this with the metal, but the spec values that are coming in aren't just quite what we want. And we really want to crank them up, crank them down. Um, that's what this next step is going to be. So um, a process that uh, we use a lot in particular at our studio in our in our pipeline is instead of us actually creating a separate specular map because you usually don't have a lot of information in there um, and a lot of times you'll have uh, with your spec maps just a solid color we like to use the red channel that comes out of our base color um, so we'll use that first now in this case I'm going to go ahead and grab it from We'll, well, actually, we'll come out of here out of the, the LERP. So I'm going to do here, and I'm going to do a, um, actually, we're going to do a mass component. Channel mask. Nope, that's not it. Uh, we want component mask. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to take the red channel. Let me get a little bit more screen space here. Okay, so I'm going to take the red channel coming out of here, which again is just going to be all that information past our, our base tint and color. Um, you could just decide to go straight off of the base color itself, um, it, a half dozen, one or the other. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this, and I'm just going to call this our specular. Move this guy off a little bit, and this will be the start of this. Okay. So what I want to do with him is I want to take our specular and I'm going to do a constant three vector. Uh, if you ever work with uh, metallic 
objects in particular, metallic materials, you'll know that uh, a lot of times you'll have a little bit of color information in that specular. So that's what we're doing here. I'm just adding a parameter so I can, uh, I can change that specular color. So we'll take him, we'll do a multiply with the color. In this case, I'm just going to do again, let's just do something arbitrary. Well, I'll do, we'll do yellow. Why not? There we go. Just so we can see it. And then, um, I'll add a couple other things. So if I, uh, because I know I'm taking that information in from the red channel of the normal, say that I want to crank up the values, right? Uh, what essentially would amount to like a contrast node in Photoshop. So I want the blacks to get blacker and the whites to get whiter. So I get a lot of that heavy contrast. Uh, that's going to come through a power node. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag off, do a power node. And then with this, I'm going to go ahead and do a constant, right? Click convert to parameter and call this spec power. Now with it, I'm actually going to do a one minus node because as I crank up the values, I don't want it to go in the opposite direction. I won't explain too much, but that's basically what happens if you plugged it just straight into your exponent here. Um, as you cranked it up, it would actually get less intense. So when you cranked it down, it would get more intense. So we're just flipping that. So as it goes up, it actually increases intensity, hence the one minus node. Okay. Um, and then from here, what we'll do is I'm going to drag off and do a multiply. And our last one, so a single constant, right click, convert to parameter. And this is, uh, we'll call it spec multiply. Okay. So to explain my thought process behind there, right, we have the red channel coming in from our diffuse. We're multiplying a color over the top if we want to. We then um, have this power node to be able to increase, and I'll set my default value to one so it's neutral. Or oh, actually, I'm sorry, zero is neutral on power. Spec multiply will do one. Um, so, so we're increasing the intensity, what is effectively the contrast of it. And then we are controlling it with this multiply. So it increases or decreases the overall effect. So uh, we'll go ahead and plug this guy into our specular. And that completes our setup for the spec channel. Uh, actually, one more thing. So we're going to select all of our components. Let's go here and we'll call this, whoop, not none specular, specular. We'll save it and we'll jump over to our instance and just double check that all those parameters are there. And there we go. Suspect multiply. Now this is, this is going to be a little hard to see, but you can kind of see it on the fringes of the, the object. So I'm just going to get this up to 10. Do spec power. Again, that's going to be difficult to see. Um, but spec color. Yeah. It's there and kind of working. Okay, so we know that there are the value parameters are, are set up. Um, good to go. Oops, we did not want to close that. Let's reopen that instance. Drag him just so we have him. There we go. Okay, so let's move on now to... Um, let's do our, our roughness channel setup. Okay, so we'll make some more room here. All right, so... I'm going to drag off of, this is our roughness, right? Because we just have a standard value coming in, but let's let's actually do some, uh, some change. So I'm going to do a, a clamp node here. And for min and max, I'm going to go ahead and drag off and do a constant. And I'm just going to convert to a parameter. I'm just going to copy and paste him. Just save me a little bit more time, min and max. And we'll call this roughness min. And this guy we'll call roughness max. So it's just going to blend between the two and, and allow us to have um, a little bit uh, higher degree of control. Another another way you could do this if you wanted to is uh, if you find this this is not giving you as enough values, do the same thing, set up your constants, uh, but instead of using the min max, um, just do a, uh, a lerp. So the way that this would look is you would plug in your roughness channel into the alpha and then your min would go into uh, your A channel and B uh, would be your max. So um, that's another way of setting up. It's up to you. Clamp kind of works the same way. So we'll do this and we'll call this roughness. Bring him down. Okay. And then from here, um, that should be all we really need set up at this juncture. We'll come back and we'll add some controls. So, okay. So that works pretty well. Um, I'm actually going to copy and paste these guys real quick, comment this and call it our metallic. Um, cause it's essentially the same process. I want to be able to have a min value and a max value. I'm going to come off of the metallic channel 
and then I'm going to go ahead and drag him into metallic and there we go last bit let's go ahead and change this to um, metallic min and metallic max and then of course uh, last bit of setup let's go ahead grab these guys and we'll call this um, do that metallic these guys will do roughness and then of course our max let's go ahead and make sure we set that to one set our max on this one as well to one um, and there we go okay so now we'll save it let's jump back to our instance make sure all of the parameters we created show up and there we go roughness max so if we drag here you can see we're starting to get some shinier roughness min which again should be the, the minimum value so make it more rough uh, and same thing with metallic now in this case metallic max let's say is is one let's say 10 now we'll go back to one minimum crank it up to say one now it's actually inheriting the properties as if it were metal um, so again just a couple little small controls here knowing ahead of time that we did the pre-planning on this that you know even though in this example we're using concrete um, this mass material could also be applied to um, uh, metallic objects as well okay perfect so let's move on now to um, yeah, let's do a detail normal. Why not? Um, okay, so with, with the process of a detail normal is, you know, we, we have this texture normal that's coming in that has all this information pertinent to the actual material. But let's say, for example, that we want to add another normal detail over the top um, to kind of kind of as like as a, a sub normal, right? That we can have individual control over tiling, uh, but be able to do some uh, some other controls over as well, independent of the base normal. So let's actually, uh, we'll, we'll get in and set up that process real quick. Okay, so with this, let's expand this guy out a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag in another texture that I have to use as my example. So I've got this kind of concrete spotted. Um, so I wanna add these little kind of like pock marks in this concrete and be able to control it, the intensity of it, how well it, it tiles and everything independent. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click, convert to parameter. And I'm gonna name this detail normal. Okay, and with this, we know, let's go ahead and just grab our UV tiling, right? So UV tiling here, I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna plug them in here. Now, in this case, I, I wanna change this. So I'm gonna put the texture with our texture input so it they're all combined together. But instead of having this as my texture input, I'm gonna create a new group called Detail Normal. That's what I'm gonna use in this one. And I'll change UV tiling. There we go. Okay. And I'll go ahead and comment this so we can see it. Detail Normal. Okay, so now we have our independent UV tiling, right? Um, I wanna take, uh, let's do normal strength. So we're definitely gonna want that, right? Very similar to what our, our, our other process set up here with our normal. Take another normal strength here, and I'm gonna put this one in our detail normal. And actually, if here's something to note too, right? Like if I have two of these parameters, oops, let's change it back to one. I have two of these parameters here, and they're both named the same. I can have that, but the problem is, is that when I adjust one, it adjusts the other. Uh, so it's important that you make sure your naming convention is wrong, other or is, is different, so you don't get the wrong effect with, as you change one, it changes the other. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna, instead of saying normal strength, I'm just gonna add detail normal. And then in this one as well, I'll call this detail UV tiling. So that should give me the different values. Uh, so as I just want, it doesn't adjust the other. So, okay, there's our normal strength. And then let's, uh, I'm gonna introduce another, another node here, which is a switch. So I'm gonna do a static switch parameter and we'll call this use uh, detail normal. The reason why I'm doing this is if, if I had completed, if, if we can kind of completed this whole node structure and we had this detail normal it would always be applied to every single material that we have well that may not be conducive to other materials like i, I may be happy with this particular concrete one and i don't want to use the detail normal so the switch allows us to kind of turn this on or off so uh, we can do that so whatever's plugged into true when it's checked 
which is right here, default value is checked, it's going to use that. And when it's unchecked, it'll use the false value. So with this, I'm gonna drag off, I'm gonna do a constant three vector. And in here, let's use the default unreal normal, which is zero in red, zero in green, one in blue. Don't forget that. I know um, for those of you that are artists, you know that a typical normal value is 128 red, 128 green, and 255 blue. However, because unreal can go in negative values as well, that falls at one in blue, zero red, and green. So um, that's the default normal. You can go look it up. Just trust me on that one. So essentially what we're doing here is we've got this detailed normal map that we have um, to be able to add on top. We have our separate UV tiling and our separate strength, but then also switch to turn it on or off. So the last bit is, let's go ahead and come up to here and we'll drag off and we'll do a blend and it should be angle corrected normals. There it is, blend angle corrected normals. Nope, wrong one. That's a matte layer blend, uh, blend angle corrected normals there we go that's the one that you want should only have two so we'll move this guy this is our additional normal our base in fact let me go ahead and drag him off this is going to our normal i'll verify that in a second so there we go so we have our base normal coming in and then we're adding this detail normal over top to uh to then output process so i'm going to change this guy just so we have a little bit of difference we'll change him to 10 detail normal texture inputs detail normal and that guy we don't need. And then we'll do, actually we'll do this use detail normal with a question mark. And we'll do, um, we'll actually put them in the normals channel. And we will save this. Okay, so let's see how that's, that's working real quick. So jump over to our master instance. In fact, let's, let's go ahead and apply this to this guy right here. So go to master materials and we've got our uh, mass material instance. Okay, so we can just kind of see in uh, in real time what's happening here. So I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I will come into here with our normal strength. Yep, looks like that's working pretty well, so we'll reset that. Okay, so we know we added that static switch parameter, right? And by default, it's unchecked. Well, if you notice, we had this texture input, right? That set our texture input. It's got a name but it's not showing up here. That's the beauty about the switch. So let's click it, use detail normal, and I will click yes to check, and now it pops up. So there's our, our, um, our two normals, right? Our detail normal, so I can come in here, I can change whatever detail I wanted. Uh, but now I have these detail normal controls, right? So if I uncheck, notice it goes away. If I check it, now my parameter, uh, my parameter show up. So I'm gonna do detail normal strength. Let's just crank this up to like 10. That might be a little bit hard to see. Maybe if we do the tiling, you can kind of see it pop up. Yeah, so you can see how it's it's applying over the top. So it gives us that a little additional. We'll crank it to 100. <laughs> so we can see. So there's there's that addition, right? And it's blending over top of our existing uh, normal. So I can come back in here as well to my base normals and crank those guys up so it still retains it. Um, so again, fun, fun little trick here just to add a little bit of uh, extra detail on top. So um, if you need those, uh, just a little bit more. So cool. All right, so that looks like that's working. So we have our detail normal. Okay, perfect. I think that, yeah, that closes out that one. Okay, last bit here. Um, Okay, so let's let's actually start adding in some uh, some dirt, right? Like th this is all well and good. Like I like this material. Um, I could stop here. You know, I've got some base colors. Um, I I can do this detail normal over top. Change my metallic values. Change my roughness. My specular. Like uh, this is a pretty good material as is. But I want to go just a step further and, and make this a little bit more powerful um, than what we have before. So with that, we're actually going to add this. Um, kind of dirt, like a, a dirt mass that goes over the top of it. So not unlike what we just did with our, our detail normal, this dirt is going to apply over the top. So we could have this infinitely tileable underneath, right? But then you get stuck in that everything looks like it's tiled. Uh, and then we can apply this dirt over top to kind of break that up a little bit. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to add another texture here that we have which is this dirt mask. And I'll, I'll actually show you here what that guy is. So I'll open him up. OK, 
Okay, so something I just uh, I put together for this little tutorial, but um, I'll show you. So there's nothing in the alpha, but we've got a red channel, right? Like this is just one dirt pattern. The green, it's a second dirt pattern. And then blue is a third one. Um, so that's what we're doing with this, uh, this, this dirt mask, essentially. Just contains three of them, super lightweight, um, much more conducive and lighter on your shader passes. So we'll call this uh, dirt. And then I'll expand this out. So let's crank through real quick getting him set up. So we know we're going to use our UV tiling. Same thing, right? Because we, we want to be able to have some control over uh, how much it tiles, how little it tiles. So I'll paste and I'll call this uh, dirt UV tiling. Okay, and I'm going to create a new group here and just call this dirt. I'm going to add our mask in to, oh, let's convert it to a parameter. We'll call it dirt mask. And I'll put him in the dirt channel as well. UV tiling here. That's fine. All right, so now let's go into, so if, remember if I said uh, we've got this red channel, green channel, in our blue channel, which is our different uh, dirt masks, we want to be able to control that on or off. Now, with the uh, release of 4.19, they added a new node in here, which is a, um, it should be a channel mask parameter. And I'll call this dirt channel. Now, the difference between this is the engine will pre-process all of the channels. So your red, your green, and your blue. Uh, the traditional way, so anything pre-419 was, um, I think it was, yeah. So you can get to the same way. If you did like a component mask, what I just did there, uh, which we had seen before. So you've got red, red, green, you can select it. Uh, you can right click convert to parameter, which you get this mask parameter. You can also right click and do mask parameter. Channel mass parameter. No, nope, that's the new one. Um, but essentially, it kind of gives you the same effect. The difference is, is that when you check this, so say, for example, I'm using this mask, right? And I uncheck because I don't want red, but I want green. As soon as I had everything unchecked, it would throw a warning saying, hey, you don't have anything selected. Versus this new method, which I'll show you in a little bit, you actually get this drop down instead where you can select your channel. So super nice. Again, if you're using pre-419, you're not going to see this, um, which again is going to come up as a, com nope, sorry, hold on, uh, channel mask. Yeah, channel mask parameter is the new method. Uh, the old method, again, I think is mask, it's component mask. Yep, that was it, static component mask parameter. So if, again, if you right click and you type in mask, um, Pre-419, you're going to get the static component mask parameter, which would be this guy. Okay, so we're going to delete this since we're doing 14. So dirt channel we have coming out. Perfect. Um, and then let's do a, uh, we're going to do a dirt tint. So I'm going to do uh, linear interpolate, right? Because we're doing the same thing. I want to blend between um, a couple different things. So my default coming in, grayscale. I'm going to come out here. Let's do a, comp uh, oh, I'm sorry, a uh, constant three vector. This will be our color tint. Right click, convert to parameter, and then dirt tint is what we'll call this. Um, let's just give it a default value of white. In this case, I'm actually thinking ahead that I don't want to tint it out of the gate, so if you select it, it's going to be default white. Um, I'll go ahead and group him to the dirt, which I think we've got everything else out. Dirt. Oh, dirt channel is not, so let's change him to dirt. Okay, and then with the alpha, it's going to be our amount. So let's do constant one vector, right click, convert to parameter, and dirt tint amount, right? So if it's zero, it's going to be everything that's coming into the A channel. If it's one, it's everything that's coming into the B. Um, actually, you know what? That won't work because that's just going to colorize it. Let's let's actually steal this process right here, right? Like we'll, we'll, we'll steal these guys since that was our tint from the, the base color. So I will paste. Let's move him, right? Okay, let's double check. What do we have here? Um, right, we don't need the multiply coming in. Instead, we need this to go to our channel selection. There we go. Dirt tint amount goes into our alpha. Dirt color, delete and delete. Pull these guys over for cleanliness. And there we go. Um, yeah, so we didn't want to use the, way, the, the old method. We just want to use this, this blend overlay. Okay, um, and then that should be our Dirt. Okay, so where do we plug it into? 
well, obviously don't have a dirt channel over here. Uh, so this is the process where we want to start blending it into. Um, in, this, in this particular case, I want to blend it into my base color, right? So I can add some of that extra detail uh, on the base color. But I also want to go into my roughness because it's dirt. I want a, a different roughness value. Um, so while we're close to the roughness, let's just go ahead and add it there. So move my metallic out of the way. All right. Um, so with this, um, what I want to do is I actually want to lerp the two of these together. So I'm going to drag off. I'm going to do lerp. Nope. I just typed too fast. I'm going to linear interpolate. There we go. So it's going to be my A value. My B value is going to be the dirt coming in. And then I'm going to drag off here and do a constant. Right click convert to parameter. And this I'm going to name dirt amount. Uh, actually, let's name it dirt roughness amount. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the dirt controls right there. There we go. And then we'll plug him into our roughness. Okay. Now with this particular process, um, not unlike what we had with our, um, uh, with our detail normal here uh, on the switch parameter is with our roughness, it's always going to be adding that dirt, right? So we could set it to zero so it doesn't apply. Um, we could put it on if we want to. Like this would still work. Um, if you want to take a step further to be able to have uh, a switch, easiest way to do that is drag off of here. We'll do a switch. Um, actually, you know what? Let's add it because um, I want to be able to turn it off or on even for the base color. So we'll do a, um, nope, we don't want static switch. We want static switch parameter. And I'm going to name this one use dirt overlay because we're going to overlay it on top of our roughness and our diffuse right so um, if it's false we want to use this guy if it's true we want to use the dirt okay and let's go and plug it into roughness there we go go ahead and save probably won't see anything pop up here um, just because again it's just turning values off and on it's not really exposing any parameters but uh, if we look at our Dirt channel, which um, let's make sure. Oh, actually, it will. So, yeah, if we do our oh, use dirt overlay, there we go. Let's just put him into our dirt channel and resave him. Okay, so there we go. Dirt, use dirt overlay. We check it. Now we get our dirt controls, dirt tint, tiling, roughness, our dirt mask, dirt channel. Like I said, we can switch that off or on, immediately compile it. And if we uncheck it, it hides everything. It doesn't really show up anywhere else. So perfect. That's working the way we want to. Okay. So if you remember um, earlier, I had mentioned the idea that, you know, if you name something the same name. So for example, if I had this spec multiply name the same as this one. So spec power, spec power. I change one, it changes the other. Typically, you don't want to use that. But in this situation, I do want to use this to my advantage because I know I, I want to be able to have a switch as well in my, my base color to turn it off or on. So if I copy this use dirt overlay static switch and I paste it up here, right? It's going to be this use dirt overlay underscore one. If I delete that over underscore one, you'll see it change color. See, it's a little bit lighter blue. So I'm using effectively the same switch uh, in two places, but when I check one, it checks the other. So um, it's just a way of you being able to have individual controls per your channel. Um, again, just know that all you need to do with that is just keep it the exact same name. So, all right, so let's go ahead and add uh, the dirt into our, um, our diffuse. So I'm going to go ahead and our, this is our dirt output. Yep, that's our dirt output. So I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to drag him up here, and let's go ahead and do a blend overlay as well, right? Because we want to retain that underlying details, uh, but just kind of blend it in. So this will be our blend. Our base will be our base color coming out. And then um, we'll add a little bit more control over that one. So I'm going to do a lerp. So we'll do linear interpolate. Right, and our A value is going to be our base color. Our B is going to be the blending. And then what we want to come out of it to control it, let's do a constant and convert to parameter. And this one we'll call a dirt uh, base color overlay. 
There we go. Okay. Now I can tell you from having set this up previously that having this, this parameter here, it's kind of weak. What I mean by that is that, you know, as you start to ramp up the value, it doesn't really show much of an effect. So to give yourself just like a little bit more control. So as you change it, it, it ramps up much faster. I'm going to go off of here. I'm going to do a divide and um, I'm just going to pull this off as a constant just so we can see it. And I'm going to just divide it by 10. So um, it's, it's less, less of an effect and it, it a little bit slower. So we'll plug that into the alpha. So uh, again, nothing fancy here with the divide and this constant really what it's doing is just a, a allowing it to ramp up faster or slower as we need it. So there we go. So we'll plug this guy into, um, this is using the dirt base. So if we want to use it, we'll do true. If we don't, we pull off of, so we have our base color, right? So all of this here, um, we'll name this base color controls. Let me go ahead and pull this guy up a little bit just so we can see. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and comment these guys. And this is the dirt addition. Okay, right. So everything contained in here, this is our base color controls. We have this switch that says, you know, hey, if we don't want to use our dirt controls, pull everything from uh, our base color, the original setup. But if we do want to use it, go ahead and add this base color in there with our controls. So dirt base color overlay, make sure it's set up to our group. We're not parameterizing this. Done. This guy's already set up. And then let's put him back out to our base color. Okay, so let's save it. And let's go actually see what is happening here with these controls. Okay, so I'm going to say, yes, I do want to use my dirt overlay. Go ahead and apply. Aha, no change. But let's go into here to base color overlay and add it. So now we can see. So if I change this dirt channel, red, green, different blue. So there we go. So we can see that dirt Let's say I go to UV tiling. I can crank this down, go back to change my dirt opacity. So it's blending over the top, which gives me this really nice breakup um, and individual controls. I can go back to my tint. Maybe say I want to change it a little bit. We'll go to, um, oh, did we leave our, ah, we did. Let's go fix that real quick. Our tint amount. So go to dirt, dirt tint amount, change it back to dirt channel, save it. Go back to our instance. And he should be back up with the rest of his buddies. And there we go, dirt tint amount. So now we can tint that dirt, which is kind of applying over the top. Um, we can go back in and we can make that a little bit uh, more controlled, but you guys get the point. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too deep in that one. Okay, so there we go. We've got dirt applying over the top. Let's take a look at our, our roughness too. Um, so dirt roughness amount. So there we go. So this, uh, I, I cranked this one up. Um, as I change my dirt channel, we can see that it applies a little bit different effect to it. Roughness contribution, but I can go back down to my roughness max. So I can change him, the underlying, um, less rough, more rough on the base, which may be hard to see on that one. Um, but you guys get the point. The, the second part of this is really the power behind uh, why you want to create master material. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And what I'm going to do here is let's just move this guy back here so we can see it. And I will create a couple more of them and show you, right? Okay, so in here, this is our master, right? This is what we created with the whole node structure, the whole node setup. So if we open that guy up. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, he's right here. So this is our master, right? This is everything that we, we set up, right? And then we created the instance off of that. So right-click create material instance, which was this M master instance, right? The one that we've been playing with. The, the second portion of this is that, you know, I'm going to apply this guy to here. I'm going to duplicate him. Or in this case, I can right-click again, create material instance. And let's say I want to name this uh, bluestone. And let's say that I'm going to right click master again, create material instance. I'm going to call this um, orange whetstone. Okay. So I, I've created two of these material instances, right? But they inherit all the properties of the master, which is beautiful. So all my controls are still there, but 
this is what's really nice about instances. So I'm going to name, I'm going to put this one to blue uh, blue stone here, and then orange whetstone over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's just start modifying the orange, or I'm sorry, the yeah, we'll go the blue whetstone first. Okay, so I'm going to come in here, base tint amount. Let's just say I want it to be this blue tint amount one. Ooh, that's a little too potent. Okay, so we'll do that. Um, base color multiply. I said I just want a little bit darker. Okay, um, yeah, why not? Let's use let's use my dirt overlay base color. I'm going to do like a half just to give a little bit of variation. Let's go ahead and tile it down to two dirt channel. Why not? We'll change it to blue. Dirt tint. We'll leave that roughness. Let's do this at 0.5 on a contribution. And again, I'm just coming up with some random numbers just to see what we're getting here. And then I'm going to come in here. Roughness max. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's we'll crank that down a little bit just to make it a little bit glossier. And then spec multiply. Let's do this by 10, just so it wraps a little bit more light. I won't explain too much with what spec does. And then there. Okay, bam. So there's one variation, right? Way faster than setting up a completely separate material. Um, so got a blue stone, um, and now let's go in and I'll do my orange wet stone. So real quick again, let's do base tint of one, base tint color. We'll change it to kind of like this orange. Uh, let's multiply it again because it's a little bright. We'll take it down. That's fine. Let's not use any dirt overlay. Let's go in because, you know, we said we wanted this to be like a wet stone. So we're going to take our roughness max. There we go. Spec multiply. Let's take this up. Let's go. 20. There we go. Let's just say we want to crank up some of those normal details, right? Get some of those nice sparkles. Kind of, so that kind of looks good. Um, I like that. It's very uniform. Let's go ahead. You know what? Why not? Let's just throw in some of that dirt overlay. We won't do a base color, but let's just do a roughness addition. So it gives us just some break up there. Tiling. Yeah, so let's take it down to one. Dirt channel. I think the blue is a little bit more intense. There we'll add two five. And bam. Okay. So so wrapping this up, um, again, the idea that as you go about creating master materials, you want to do some pre-planning, figure out what kind of controls do you want to give your artists, your level designers, uh, anybody who will be uh, changing these, these master materials. Uh, but then also deciding to um, again, if you want like one master material to rule them all, if you create one that has every single control that you want, I highly recommend against it. Again, from like a uh, instruction set, you don't want to have this super, super dense one across everything. Um, you know, you need to decide in that pre-planning when, uh, if and when you break off to create another new master material. Um, and then you add all these controls in there and then you simply just duplicate, create these material instances, which we did here. Um, now, in, in kind of summarizing this, why this is such a powerful process is because, um, I mean, clearly on the screen, you can see we've got a blue stone, we've got this, you know, kind of concrete stone, we've got this orange stone, all of which have been derived from the same material, right? Like I'm, I'm using the exact same number of textures in there, right? I've got my dirt mask and I've got these three. Um, and then if I use the, uh, which you didn't hear the detail normal, they're using the exact same uh, amount of textures, right? So I've only loaded what is essentially five textures, that's it. But yet I can create a ton of variations, an infinite number of variations on it. That is the power of using master materials. Um, so uh, hopefully hopefully this helps you guys out a little bit. I, I know this one is, is probably going a little bit longer on the tutorials, um, quite a, a little bit more complex process set up. Uh, but hopefully you gather some things from this to be able to set up your own master materials. Um, and again, add whatever controls you guys want, take them away. Always be mindful of your shader instructions, how many passes, how many texture samples. Um, be, be nice to your, to your um, uh, art directors and your producers that want to have uh, lighter weight materials that aren't so dense. Um, but again, I hopefully, hope this helps you guys understand a little bit how to set up those mass materials if and when to break off, um, use material functions as well. So uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care.